Affirmations for Living by Darian J. Elmer. This poem is entitled, If I Could. I would surround myself with people who bring out the best in me. I would rid myself of the negativity in my life, including friends and significant others. I would save money for a rainy day. I would have a kind word for someone each day. I would do something nice for someone just because. I would rekindle old friendships. I would learn to say no. I would go to the gym and stop talking about going. I would treat myself to something each payday because I deserve it. I would take time for myself to be with myself, to understand myself. I would go back to school to take that class I've been putting off. I would love myself first so that I may love others. I would do all these things and more if I could and I can. You're watching Empowering Voices. Empowering Voices is seated inside the studios of the Talk of Chicago at this very moment, 1690 WVON, sitting with the governor of Radio Talk, Cliff Kelly. Today well, your focus is school violence. Absolutely. What are the comments like at this moment? Well, the comments uh, are very important, Reverend, because this is the day that two members of the Obama administration uh, are here and to respond to that horrific situation of the young man who was beaten to death at uh, Finger High School. And most people think that it's uh, not only a farce, uh, it's really not accomplishing anything. They're also saying that the only reason that, that the Attorney General and the Secretary of Education are here is because that beating was videotaped and played all over the, country. the, wor the, yes, world. the world. The world. Otherwise, this wouldn't even be happening. Uh, at this point, no one has said anything relative to the fact that they think anything positive has come about as a result of the meeting. Um, obviously, we're still getting feedback, but at this point, Reverend, there doesn't seem to have been any meeting with the people who are the ones that really need to tell these folks what the problem is. The problem wasn't the violence. The problem was the situation. The problem is violence, but right. it's not... It's not a, an educational situation. It's a situation that Arnie Duncan created when he was here. Why are you going to take children out of one place and make them go to another one? Uh, and they told him this. I mean, not, this doesn't have to do with gangs. This is simply territory. Right. But you have both problems. And so as a result of, of this, I don't know whether anything will come of it. Maybe some money, if the money is spent correctly, and that's going to be difficult because we know what's happened in the past relative right. to money. Uh, I don't know uh, if anything positive is going to come of it or not. The latest uh, study proved that I think almost every single day some, were, some young male, African American, Latino, or Latino American, mm -hmm. can, lives or faces the possibility of being shot to death. And that age group is like from 10 to 25. So is but money the answer? The thing is. They, they, uh, the Huberman, who mm -hmm. is now the chief executive officer of CPS, they identified so many hundreds of young men who have the proclivity of being subject to mm -hmm. crime, uh, to being a victim. Right, a right. victim. So they, I don't know how they did that. I don't know how you make that determination. Right. But I do know this. They gave the contract as to whatever was going to be done to some group in Pennsylvania. Right. What kind of sense does that make? Uh, one of the callers just mentioned the fact, have surrogate parents trained. Right, exactly. I remember when under the um, past administration when we used to have parent-child centers. Lyndon Johnson started that. Right. The recognition that parents are not always uh, have the ability. You know, I have a saying that the human body is the only complex machine that can be totally reproduced by unskilled labor. Hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, to do anything important. Right. And I can't think of anything more important, Reverend, than being a parent. But you want to drive a car? That's important. Okay, you got to get a license. You got to show. You want to do something else? You got to get a license. Right. Anybody can be a parent, unfortunately, and uh, many of them never learn how. Let's talk about the the importance of the faith leaders. We already know within the history of the African American community. Mm -hmm. Faith leaders, pastors, men, women have always been a part of the efforts for the community. Is that happening now? If it is, why not? Or what else needs to be done? Well, the, the, the 
at one point, this was funny, at one point I found out when I was working mornings that there were people who said that, you know, Cliff is an atheist or at least an agnostic. <laughs> And when I found that out, I made sure that I said, no, I've always been a believer. Mm -hmm. What you misunderstand is the problem I have is with some of the middlemen. Okay. <laughs> so if I'm busting out your pastor, it doesn't mean I'm not a believer. You know, maybe your pastor isn't. I'm not sure based on how he treats the flock. So uh, the problem is that uh, we have some wonderful leaders in the faith community, some that are just great. However, we have some that aren't. I would like to see a more collective group get together because, as you just pointed out, Reverend, and you're totally correct, the church has been the leading progressive part of the black community forever. I mean, ever since slavery and uh, civil rights and so forth, who were the real leaders were always uh, pastors. We need to get that together again. You know, we've got enough people. and and, and this is why I said I was so glad to see all these pastors get together the other day. Mm -hmm. Even though the subject may not have been something that we really need. We, we need that, but right. we've got other problems too. Um, but if we can keep that group together and have them to address some other issues like we're talking about right now, I think that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of leadership we need. And I don't know of any politicians or anybody else, there, there are no people that, whether this is good or bad is irrelevant, I mm -hmm. think it's factual. The, the black church is, the, uh, is, has always been the entity by which we make, we move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to have to happen here too. I know that you're going to be talking with uh, Pastor Moss and some of the young people from Trinity in a couple of days about the upcoming youth rally. Yes, and right. over the years, uh, you've talked to many young people, but today, for the simple fact that we're in a crisis. Yes, we are. We're having crises uh, regarding our children. If you had the opportunity to talk to a young person who's thinking about killing another young person, what would you say to that person? Well, first I would try to find out why anybody would reach that point. Uh, there's got to be a reason, and normally it's something that is totally irrelevant to what they think should be the reason that you would take someone's life. There are very, very rare situations, Reverend, as you well know, where that is justified. Mm -hmm. So, it's, in fact, uh, protecting your family and yourself is probably the only reason for it. So, uh, you would try to find out what in this young person's mind would lead them to such a drastic idea that they were, are they going to do this and think about it? Now, a lot of things that we see is peer pressure. Mm -hmm. We see folks do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, even, you know, we hear about this, people who actually are smart in school and intentionally don't get good grades because their peers are going to say, oh, you try to act like you're white. Right. Or something. I mean, that's pathetic. So we have to at least sit down with this person that you're talking about and trying to get into his or her head because right. you've got a lot of it women crosses, out here that's right, it crosses that's right, the gender the same line. Thing. Right. And the only thing to do is to try to relate to them and to try to find out uh, what the problem is. Normally, uh, and I've talked to some young people who have some major problems. They haven't said I'm going to kill somebody, but they have said they're going to do something that we'll be able to address, mm -hmm. that they could resolve the problem by some other means than they were talking about. So I think, again, as I, I mentioned earlier, communication, and that's why the church is so good at that, because that's what you have to do. And you have to give people hope. If they don't have hope, and when you see these streets, you've got to go another way, and, and the church does that. If you can get people to really believe, uh, the, the, the church, I think, at this point, is more important than it's been in maybe since slavery. I don't know. But, uh, you know, you folks at Trinity, for instance, I have to repeat, <laughs> I've thank been you. a supporter of you for a long, long time. We appreciate it. Yeah. But thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you so much for allowing me to talk to you. You're wonderful. And come back anytime. All right. All right. I'm thank Cliff you. Kelly, and this is Empowering Voices.